Hello everyone, Jeff and Jay here with another edition of Jay's Big Adventure, Jay's the Fuzzy One. And today we are going to look at this 2004 Toyota Highlander to see whether it's a good candidate to flip. So the first thing I do is I just want to take a quick look around and look at the condition of the car. And if you notice here, there's a little bit of a gap on the front bumper, so we're going to look at that. Look at the wheels to see if they're scratched. And the wheels on this look to be in really good condition. Now again, here again, there's a little bit of something that's been torn off. This is a 2004 all-wheel drive vehicle in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's been used in the winters. You know, it's got some little scratches and dings and stuff, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. And overall, it seems to be in pretty good shape. I don't know if you'll be able to see those scratches there. Usually the wheels are one of the biggest areas of damage and these seem to be in really good shape. Some paint off here, scratches in the door, but all in all, nothing that is terribly out of line. But here's something that I definitely want to look into closer. This is obviously loose and you can see this clip is broken. So that's going to require some attention to figure out what is broken in here or has been knocked off. A little bit of paint work here, but overall not bad. There's a little bit of condensation in the headlights, but they're really clear, which is nice. And so these are the headlights on a 2003 Toyota Camry, and you can see there's definitely a cloudy look to the plastic. If those were on the car that I was buying, I would need to either polish those or replace them. <clears throat> the Highlander's lights, by comparison, are in great shape. Dale lights are the same way. <clears throat> There's no cloudiness. There are no cracks. It's actually in very good shape. <clears throat> They're really clear. The only thing that I'm going to need to look into is that condensation. So one of the things about Toyota, Honda, and BMW is that when they build the car, they put the actual VIN of the vehicle on every, every panel on the car. Excuse me, Jay. So if we look at the VIN here, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but there's the, there's the actual VIN of the vehicle. Here we go. You can also find the VIN there. It's important that those match. The Toyota makes one set of these, period, and those are not replaceable. So what we're gonna do is walk around and make sure that that VIN tag is there. Here's one. And there is the sticker here. What there is, is a sticker that says Toyota R dot. What that means is this door is not original. That is a factory replacement door panel. So that door has been replaced. So now we're going to look at the engine compartment. This thing is really clean. This is a 16-year-old SUV that's been driven throughout the winter. It's really nice. But right here is where that VIN tag should be. And it is not here. What that means is that this fender has been replaced as has this one. So whatever happened has taken the whole doghouse off. And that is definitely something that I want to look into further. Now, 
It does have all the factory stickers, which is important. But here's that VIN tag, and it's been painted over. So my guess is this is a hood off of a different vehicle. I'm gonna look down in here for leaks. There's a little bit of oil down in here, but nothing bad, but overall, this thing's really clean. And what I wanna look for are oil leaks. You know, if this hasn't been maintained well, there'll be oil leaks. There, this this area in here will be all just dirty and grimy because it's been leaking oil and then the oil attracts the dirt. But this thing's really, really clean. That means it's been well cared for and that's what we're looking for. Down in here, radiators are in really good shape. Now then this car only has 114,000 miles on it and it is 16 years old almost 17 years old so the cap itself is clean but there's quite a bit of sludge and stuff in here it just means that it hasn't been driven much which is commensurate with the miles if this thing had, been, had just been replaced and that had just been cleaned i would want to do a little bit more research see if there's a reason for that I got that back on straight. The other thing I'm going to look for are these engine mounts. This is the torque tube that controls the engine from rocking back and forth when you put it in gear. When we go to drive it, if there's a, a significant clunk when you put it in drive or when you go from drive to reverse, this piece, the rubber in here, or the rubber in here, is probably bad. That piece is really inexpensive and it's really easy to fix, but it makes a pretty terrible noise. So if somebody doesn't know a lot about cars and they start hearing this clunk, um, that may help you get a better deal. Also look to see if I can see what the what kind of shape the belts are in. And it all looks like it's in really good shape. Okay, now let's go to the inside. Door panels are in really good shape. Dash is perfect. Excuse me, Jay. The seats are in great shape and I'm always going to look for the bolster here because if there's any wear, if the guy was heavier, that's where it's gonna wear. This is actually in really good shape for the miles. Passenger seat and door panel are perfect. Back seats are perfect. Headliner is perfect. So this car has been really, really well cared for. And that's a big advantage. One of the things that I want to look for are options on the car. This car has the roof rails, which are expensive when they were new. The window trim is blacked out, which is nice. I, I'm assuming that's part of the limited package. It has alloy wheels instead of um, uh, hubcaps. It's got the mud flaps front and rear. That one's looks like it's about ready to get torn off. Um, but those are the sorts of things that I'm going to look for. Also, this car has heated seats. They are, however, not factory Toyota heated seat switches. So that's definitely something that we want to look into because that means they were done um, as an accessory at the dealership, they were not uh, factory Toyota. But having heated seats is definitely a nice thing for the winter. Floor mats are in good shape for being 16 years old and over 100,000 miles. It does have the rear carpet mats. Carpet mats are going to be a couple hundred bucks. So if they're, uh, if they're there and they're in good shape, that's a big, that's a big plus. Seats fold down easily. And this has a very nice carpet mat on the back as well.
if you look in the trunk it's got a really nice highlander factory cargo cover carpet that's uh, that's a nice touch it keeps the actual floor in really good shape what i did notice though is that this trim piece is off and this trim piece goes here what that tells me is that somebody took it off for a reason and my guess is they've got a water leak so if you feel the floor mat there is definitely a little bit of moisture here yeah it's not it's not soaked but this is definitely not dry underneath you've got the factory tow hook looks like they've got some jumper cables in here which is nice and here's something that's important this highlander came two ways i can't get it up but this has the back seat that's a big option if it did not have the third row we would definitely need to figure that in when we go to look at our pricing another piece to this puzzle is the third row is cloth it is not leather so now that we've found the fact that it does not have leather on the third row we want to do a little more digging a couple other clues here for starters this does not have a sunroof and all the limiteds did the other big thing is that this car does not have electronic temperature control the limiteds have fully electronic temperature control where you just set it to 75 degrees and it stays there this is just warmer or colder or it's hot there's cold fan speed where the air comes from this is all manually controlled that was not in the limited so this truck has not limited it was advertised as, as limited because it has alloy wheels and leather seats but now we know that that is not because it's a limited that's because someone put leather in a standard vehicle and that does affect the value one thing i do want to do is look at the condition of the brake rotors and the edge here i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this there's very very little lip on the rotor itself the the brake surface is very smooth and there's very little lip here if there was a big lip on that rotor that means it may need to be replaced before it will pass inspection i don't know if this is going to show up but the back brakes are also in very good shape there's very little lip and that means that those rotors are not original they have been replaced which is a good thing these are the front rotors to my 2003 bmw m3 and here you can see a significant ridge between the rotor face where the pad contacts it and the edge what that means is that these rotors are nearing the end of their service life and they may not pass inspection on this car these brakes are probably 12 or 1500 dollars so you definitely want to know whether you're going to need to replace them if you're looking to buy the car to resell okay so after looking the car over carefully uh, we actually raised more questions than we answered i think so i wanted to do a little bit more digging in terms of how to price this because it was listed as a limited but it's not uh, the leather was added after the fact and we can tell that because the third seat the third row does not have leather it's cloth so it was a standard level car um, the alloys were either ordered that way or it was added that way and the leather and the alloys are about half of the limited package the other big parts are a power glass moonroof and full climate control where you just set the temperature and let it go this car has neither one of these in addition the heated seats have been added after the fact as well so based on that now we have to go back and redo the numbers so what i did was i went to nada and the 
limited with 114,000 miles on it and the proper equipment says average retail is about 78.50 for a standard with leather and with alloys and with the third row says it's about 74.50 so it's it's a $400 difference really comes down to the sunroof the climate control I don't think most people are going to not buy a car because it doesn't have have the set and forget temperature control but the sunroof can be a big deal Toyotas and Hondas, the sunroofs tend to be very reliable. They don't tend to leak. And in this part of the country, in Salt Lake City, the sunroof is kind of nice. The fact that this does not have one uh, could be a potential problem. But with NADA, they say the difference between the two is 400 bucks. If you go to Kelly Blue Book, they say private party range for a standard is between 4,300 and 6,300. On a limited, it's between 5,000 and 7,100. So. 800 bucks, not 400 bucks at the high end of the range. So now we've got a conundrum. This is a significantly different vehicle than what was advertised. And because there were questions, I went ahead and pulled a Carfax. Carfax is interesting. In March of 2012, the car was involved in a head-on collision and it says it was with an animal. So here in Utah, that was a deer hit. And if it was a moose hit, the car wouldn't have survived, <laughs> and probably the occupants wouldn't have either, but that's a different story. So back in 2012, there was a, a, a head-on strike on a deer. It does say that the airbags did not deploy, which is a good thing because that means it was a lesser level of impact and damage than it would have been if it had been um, hard enough for the airbags to come out. Then in 2015, um, in, in August or uh, September 4th, 2015, this car had an accident that involved the right front, right side, and right rear body panels. Now, this is where that DOT replacement door comes in on the passenger side. We know the both front fenders have been replaced because there are no VIN stickers on that. The door has been replaced because it says DOTR on the door and there's no VIN sticker there. The rear door is original because that VIN sticker is still in place and it does not look like there were any um, major alterations to the rear of the car. So whatever it was probably got the hood and the front door and then the rear door was um, damaged, but they were able to fix it in the body shop. You know, pull the dents, what have you, repaint it. I gotta say the paintwork on this car is outstanding. Gold and silver can be really tough to match if you don't lay the paint properly if you don't have the the car grounded properly in the paint booth and that's you can see these cars on the street you go by and the front two you know body panels are significantly different color than the back two but only in certain lights right if the if the light is hitting the car one way versus the other that changes whether you can tell that it's been painted this car it doesn't matter what light you've got it in you cannot tell so the paint works outstanding and because this car was completely maintained from the dealership that tends to lead you to believe that when the car was damaged in an accident he had it fixed by a reputable shop it was done it was done properly so that all helps the the, the key is in 2018 there was yet another accident now it says damage report typically on carfax if there is a accident report it means it involved another vehicle and it was on a public road at least if it's a damage report if the car is sitting in your driveway and a tree falls on it that's not an accident okay the, the, the car was damaged but it was not a, a a moving a moving accident so it's hard to tell exactly what happened because it, they don't give us any other details but this car now has three hits on the carfax and that's a problem that's a big drop in value it was listed incorrectly as a limited, not a standard. It's got three hits on the Carfax. He wanted $8,000 for it. I think it's a $4,500 car. Um, so here's where you really have to do some, uh, some searching to see what other vehicles are in your area. An under $10,000 all-wheel drive vehicle that's in good shape with excellent maintenance records is hard to find in Salt Lake City, especially if, it, if it's one that hasn't rusted uh, significantly on the on the underside of the vehicle and this one is, is in good shape the question is will someone else catch the three accident reports 
and will they care? And it's a really tough question. And this is one of those vehicles that you would be rolling the dice on unless you can buy it right. I'm thinking 4,500 bucks. At that point, I've got plenty of room to say, hey, look, yes, it, it, was a, it should be a $7,000 vehicle. I think it's a $5,995 kind of vehicle and then go from there. If I can pay 4,500 for it, I've still got room. But my margins are getting pretty slim. <clears throat> Good news is this vehicle's had the timing belt done. It's had all the services completed. Um, you know, timing belt, water pump, that service is $1,000. The you know, brake fluid, antifreeze, all that stuff's been done. You can see that in the Carfax report because it lists the service from Mark Miller Toyota, which means it was done properly because it was done by the Toyota shop. So that's it for this episode. Um, please watch, please like, please subscribe. The next section we're going to do on this vehicle is going to be the test drive. How do you go out and test drive a vehicle to see whether indeed um, there is something that is uh, of significant expense that you're going to have to uh, mess with down the road? So like, watch, subscribe. See you in a little bit. Jay says thank you.